and welcome to this series concerning yoga. The first question I uh, received was um, how does yoga relate to other religions and specifically nature religions? First of all let us try to understand what yoga really is. Um, yoga literally means yoke and the yoke is in a way what connects like the animal with the plow. Um, it is used in a symbolical meaning in, uh, in Sanskrit and it is meant to in a way be the bridge between the individual and uh, the divine or between the illusionary and the essence. So what we in the West would call religion, religare, reconnecting, is basically the same as the word yoga. So what is the relationship between yoga and religion? Well, they're actually the same thing. To focus a little bit more, let us first understand that there's not one type of yoga. There are roughly four classes of yoga. And these are not what we would typically think of as yoga in the West. So the first form is bhakti yoga. Bhakti is love or servitude out of love. And it basically means that the person devotes themselves to God or to some higher ideal. And they live and act um, to serve that. So a life of devotion, a life of servitude. This is something which actually uh, happens in many other religions and also in paganism where people devote themselves to a deity or to a saint or to a principle and try to um, embody that principle or try to serve that deity to the best of their abilities. And by doing so, by opening their heart more and more, they're able to receive more and more of that emanation of that higher power. And that emanation, because they have an open heart, will, in a way, um, land in fertile ground and will start to blossom and flourish within that person. So the art of Bhakti Yoga is the art of opening your heart and being selfless and to allow yourself to become part of something greater, of higher than yourself. The second part is something we know a little bit less here in the, in the West. It is Karma Yoga. Karma is basically action. And Karma Yoga is basically the art of performing right actions or performing your actions in as good a way as possible. So you find it a little bit within a Protestant religion where also people believe that what is done should be done in the best way possible and you also find it in especially the Nordic form of paganism where there's a very strong sense of uh, duty, of morality which is uh, should guide you in all your actions and it should actually be even more important than life or death to act in a proper way, not to lie, not to steal, uh, not to betray, not to kill um, is seen as more valuable than uh, self-preservation or survival. So the art of karma yoga is based upon that when we build a certain pattern and we eventually let go of our mortal form, that pattern will continue. So it will continue either by us taking again a physical form or just taking another energetical form. And ultimately that form will be most suited to our behavior. So if we are spending our life to be non-violent, our next incarnation will be a non-violent one. If I, we spent our inclination in, by being generous, we will yeah, take on a form which will allow us to continue to be generous. So by controlling our actions, and not just what we do, but also how we feel about it, how we think about it, 
um, we start building a pattern, we start building a habit, and this habit will continue to stay with us, hopefully over several lifetimes, and become further and further refined. So if I show my compassion, it is just a human level of compassion who, yeah, a person who feels something in some situations, but then in other situations. And it's of course very far from being like Virgin Mary or Buddha, who are more higher embodiments of that compassion. So I can also be inspired by examples, um, Mother Teresa, Florence Nightingale, to act in a certain way so that my behavior becomes better and better and I become closer and closer to a higher form so that ultimately I will take the form of a saint or a servant of a deity or even a deity itself and maybe even uh, reach an angelic state. So this is the path of karma yoga, the art of in a way self-development and self-discipline it's found a lot more in, um, in the Orient and it's also an essential part of many of the Japanese martial arts which are not just a way of fighting but are also very much a way of life. So besides the Bhakti Yoga and the Karma Yoga we also have Jnana Yoga. So Jnana Yoga is not seen as a religion here in the West, but it is very much a religion. It is basically, Jnana is knowledge, understanding, wisdom, what we would call in a way science. So we try to become one with all and everything, with the divine, by knowing more about it, by understanding its nature, by understanding its laws. So in uh, Europe, the natural sciences were used to be very much a part of religion. They were studied by priests who were interested in biology, in chemistry, in physics, in mathematics, because they fought to be able to understand the Creator's will and mind better by understanding what He created and how it was created. It is not only that we gather knowledge through reading books, but also very much through experience, through uh, logic, through inference, through um, comparing our experiences with that of other people and trying to sift what experiences are valuable, which experiences are truthful or telling about the nature of our cosmos and therefore also about the nature of ourself or the nature of our creator, or creators even. So Jnana Yoga is also a form of religion. Religion through knowledge, religion through science. And finally, last but not least, is the form which we in the West try, tend to think of as yoga. And this is the Ashtanga or Raja Yoga. So the, this form of yoga is a very um, structured form of religion which consists of eight different steps which we take consecutively to reach a state of higher awareness or greater union with ourselves or with the deity. And one of these steps, namely the third, deals with ashtangas, postures. And this form, which is also called Hatha Yoga, um, that is, uh, uh, sorry, the asanas, not ashtangas, asanas postures. So this form is basically what we in the West associate with yoga. But it is important to understand that these postures are just, yeah, part of the process. So the first two steps are basically virtue and sin. So we have to stop sinning, we have to get rid of our negative patterns as much as possible, both in action and in thought and in emotion, and we have to start building up a positive pattern. So these first two steps are basically 
um, you could say a, a short form of the uh, karma yoga proper action so once we try to move into this proper action the postures are meant to help to speed that speed up that change because patterns get yeah a little bit we get used to patterns they're a little bit like a river which cuts a bed and yeah water will follow the easiest path so what we did before we will tend to do again what we thought before we will tend to think again what we felt before we will tend to think again and it is very hard to liberate ourselves from ourselves and trying to get rid of the past you don't want and to create paths which you do want is the first step in that and the postures the asanas they open up our energy channels and all these patterns which are part of our energy channels by opening these energy channels we give them energy we give them space so they can move they can transform they can build up and they can flow out of us so first we need a correct will and then we need a correct technique to uh, transform ourselves this pattern of ultimately um, first trying to identify what is virtue what is sin and then trying to change it I think is applicable to all religions the big difference is that within this um, Hindu tradition or Vedic tradition they actually developed a strategy by which this process can happen a lot more easily and a lot more quickly because many people s struggle with, uh, with sins for all their life and find it very hard to change themselves but by the process of asanas it's, the change can go much much quicker it also has a benefit because if our energy is less stuck then the life force will tend to move more strongly more smoothly which is also beneficial for our organs for our energetic balance so it also has a positive effect on our health but in a way from a religious standpoint this is more of a side effect uh, than a purpose but of course here in the west where we are more uh, yeah, materialistic and more identified with our bodies it is often seen as a main reason to, uh, to do it we perform uh, the yoga asanas to improve our body's condition our body's health um, and it is not a bad thing to do that because we will stimulate our energy channels and open up ourselves for transformation but if we are not in a way already moving in the right direction by making our energy body more flexible it will move more quickly it will transform more quickly but not necessarily in the direction which we desire so I do feel that the first two steps um, of trying to improve virtues and decrease sin are essential before we start the yoga asana so but I think also anybody of you following any religion would already be working on those two steps before you start incorporating the yoga asanas as part of your religious practice so I do think it combines well as to the more specific question as to the relationship between uh, yoga and nature religions or, or primitive religions I think that yoga has a very strong relationship with that so in nature religions like uh, shamanism and druidism and um, early Egyptian paganism um, both the bhakti yoga and the karma yoga were already a very strong aspect so we have to open our hearts to communicate with the rocks with the trees with the animals with the birds with the spirits without an open heart this is not possible and through our open heart we can enter into these higher realms of consciousness of awareness so I do think that the bhakti yoga aspect is very much a part of nature religion in nature religion we also try to learn 
um, from all other life forms. Each has their own power, their own specialty, their own wisdom, their own personality, their way of doing things, of dealing with things. And we see them as guides, as inspirations, as hints as to, as to the power which might may lie slumbering within ourselves. And as we try to learn from all creatures around us, we can also practice karma yoga, trying to build up a certain behavior and by behaving in the way of a certain power or a certain spirit, we also forge more of a bond with them and we also learn to incorporate more of their traits into our own energy body. So nature religion and especially uh, shamanism and the part of shamanism and druidism where you uh, try to transform your energy body to become more like a certain uh, stone, plant, animal or spirit or inviting those powers to inhabit your body and to uh, use their powers using your own energy body is very much karma yoga. The aspect of jnana yoga, however, is not so present within nature religions. It is a part of old ancient traditions. For instance, if you um, look at old cosmologies and um, mystery uh, plays, um, mystery schools, and especially astrology, um, there we have a lot of knowledge which is helping us to understand the cosmos. But nature religions tend to be a lot more practical. They're about yeah, what to do in a very practical sense, not so much in a theoretical sense, in philosophizing about the nature of our existence, the nature of our being and the structure. Of course, through experience, we build up some of the jnana, but with the nature religions it is not seen as uh, the tool or the method which will lead us to the ultimate as it is within the Jnana Yoga in the um, Vedic sense. If we look at the um, um, uh, Raja Yoga, um, the postures, just like the postures in uh, many of the ancient martial arts, have the names of animals and they're also um, in a way inspired by the movements of the animals. Animals move in certain ways and by moving in the same way you can also move your energy in that way. In shamanism you have a lot of this. You have animal dances, animal postures and um, also in Tai Chi we find this. And to me this is actually very similar. So whether I do shamanic um, postures or dances or yoga, um, the goal is a little bit different because when I do it in uh, the sense of a nature religion, I also try to communicate with the spirit to become more one with the animal by behaving in the same way, by in a way becoming the animal. And in yoga, it, is, it doesn't go that deeply into, uh, into becoming one with the source of the form. Um, it is rather about learning more about the human form than trying to transcend the human form. So here we find a very distinct difference between how postures are practiced within nature religions and within uh, the yoga. Also within nature religions it is not so much um, about virtue and sin. In nature religions we tend to accept that things have their own nature. Um, cats eat mice. It is their nature. It is not good, it is not evil, it is not a virtue nor a sin. It is how they are. And the same goes for all forms. whether thing is an animal or a dog or a bird or a fish. Each behaves according to its nature, which is neither good or evil. Um, so we don't try to force ourselves in a certain direction as much. 
by having this concept of virtue and sin, which are of course an inherent part of the uh, Raja Yoga tradition. So there we find a bit of a difference. So I hope that this introduction on different forms of yoga and how it relates has been helpful and in the next video we will go more deeply into this subject.